Thought well, John thinks of this. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be a fast race. It's a little bit muddy up there, so I think it'll be important to keep your equipment together and uh, try to stay away from crashes and uh, have a good race. And I'm pretty optimistic. I like these conditions. Of course, it always helps us uh, when it's really muddy because we are more used to riding in the mud. So, of course, that's an advantage for us. Because there are not no climbs in there, no longer climbs. It's going to be a tactical race, really fast, two short race, and tactic is going to be important today. Well, there we heard uh, Frischnet and Dernis, uh, both excellent cyclocross riders, world champions themselves in their days at various levels, and now uh, John Tomek, previous champion as well, who still smart if not riding the downhill. And there they go. In fact, last year, Thomas Frischnet and uh, the Norman national champion Dave Vines went along to what they thought was a Miss World Cup beauty contest, and they turned out they were going to be the judges, they thought, and in fact, they turned out to be the contestants, <laughs> put them in ladies' gowns and all sorts. Oh, Baker on the front there, going through. Barry Clark stuck back here for rally. So over the weekend, a lot of people had a lot of fun, but right now it's down to the serious stuff. The rain has stopped, but it's still a bit gooey as far as these riders are concerned. Baker making a good start, too. David Baker, well, keep your fingers crossed for him. He was very badly bitten by mosquitoes a few days ago and uh, had to go to hospital. And he wasn't the only one. A couple of journalists have also been in there and they've treated him. And Dave was saying that uh, he'd been a bit uh, dozy since then. It knocked him about a bit, the treatment they gave him for the, uh, uh, for, the, for the mosquito bites. So keep your fingers crossed for the British champion who's made a very good start indeed. But look who's shot into the lead. Wearing number two on his bike, uh, Denise. World champion, not only as a mountain bike rider, but also as a cyclocross rider too. And these are conditions that he likes. And that's why you see uh, David Baker in there too, British champion. Tinker Jure is probably not liking these conditions there. Tomek just behind Frischnet on the way through now. These uh, riders, Barry Clark also going through for the rally team. And uh, there they go. Saw Tim Gould making a move. I mean, he was fairly well back though in his pack, so uh, Tim rode extremely well last week, coming back after his long illness. And now this is the style of the crossmen, the bike on the shoulder, and Jurez trying to stay in the saddle a bit longer, finding himself here in some very exalted company when it comes to cyclocross. So you've got traditional... Here we're, oh, I thought I saw Gould coming up. He's moving up into fourth place at the moment. Tim Gould for Schwinn. John Tomac. Said he didn't seem to mind the conditions, but he don't, I don't think he like being back where he is now. And uh, so, on the way through. I think the shortened course is certainly going to help some of these riders today because it's... Uh, uh, Salenbach made a good start there for Richie, uh, but he's dropped back a bit off the pace. Getting to halfway point in this race, and it's Denise taking a drink, oh, followed by one. Frischnet. Then uh, in there is Jurez and Tim Gould. Looking back to this, this little group here have made a very nice break off the front. Tomac then chasing on his way through. Barry Clark just a little bit off the pace right now. And David Baker began to suffer as a result, I think, of his, uh, of his problems with mosquito bites. Oh, they've got up to them now. Oh, Tomek's forced his way through suddenly. That's a good ride then. They've suddenly got together. We've got six half, and Tomek's gone straight through. He looked like he struggled at one time, but Tomek then has forced his way through then. Denise has been pushed back into the third spot behind Gull with up in front then Frischneck and Tomek. In fact, they pushed him back a bit that time. He's dropped back into fourth, but he forced his way. Oh, that's close up. Mike Closer has really dug the dirt and got a mouthful of mud. Now you see how riders can crack their collarbones when they put their hands out. Forty went down face down, both hands rather than just going down one side and slid as he went. So easy to get your bike on the wrong side of a rut and then away it goes and there's nothing you can do but just hope that when you pick yourself up you haven't bust your bike and you in one piece yourself. Tim Gould then chasing now, full of determination, the Derbyshire lad for Schwinn, chasing after Richie Ryder, and, well, they really are sorting themselves out the back here then, Valen Salenbach, then Jurez, and there, Johnny Tomac, the Tioga Rally rider, taking him to drink, and he's got the, uh, the blue jersey on as the leader in the Grundig World Cup, but he's not up there at the moment. Look apart, Brendan's coming through, number three, well, he's been a very slow starter. 
Brennians, who last week, as uh, Gary Ford, also forcing his way through at the moment, doing a good ride here. So Gary Ford, just ahead then of the grand old man of the sport himself. He's just gone past uh, Nell Overin. That was a great ride, saying that uh, Bart Brennions is working his way through. In fact, last week he was disqualified. He finished in around about 27th place or something. He wouldn't have got a hat full of points for that. But he's disqualified, I understand, for having some outside assistance when he had a mechanical problem. You have to look after your bike yourself all the way around. And uh, I understand unofficially that he would, that's the reason that uh, they disqualified him, Bart Brennions, who is a very great cyclocross rider. And when it comes to mountain biking, Holland wins about just everything there is. So he's forcing his way up at the moment. As this little group, group, group start again, David, on, on zip your mouth, leading group are going away right now. So he's got a lot of work to do as far as this lot's concerned. And Tomac beginning to struggle just a bit. Oh, come on, John. Well, we're going to take a short break as Dave Ains pushes himself up that hill for John and Brack. Come back to us in just a few seconds for more action from the Grundig. Every day, Eurosport News brings you the latest from the world of sport. The best coverage, the day's results. The most up-to-date sports news brought to you by Eurosport commentators. Ladies and gentlemen, the official shoe of the Wimbledon champion. Eurosport news is brought to you by Hitech. Eurosport news, Monday to Friday, 7:30 p.m. here on Eurosport. substance but merely to unblock his nose ephedrine is a drug that is found in common drugs used against the colonized in a few minutes time in the united states maradona is not the first man to be sent home from the world cup if indeed he is sent home in 1974 a haitian player was sent home from the world cup in germany and then in 1978 scotland's willie johnson was also sent home for a drug offense so let me confirm once again it has been confirmed in the united states that diego maradona has failed a drug test the second test for ephedrine proved positive Diego Maradona looks likely to be sent home from the World Cup the Eurosport phone-in competition with Club Mediterranean this week you can win a trip for two to the fabulous Darba Laia Village Club Portugal also to be won, Fruit of the Loom casual wear. Just dial the following number right now. Hello. Hello. Heureuse par j'écoute. And good luck. Welcome back then to Mont saint -Anne. Fifth lap of six laps in this, the men's cross-country race, shortened because of the conditions and Frischnet putting the pressure on at the front. Mount Sinan, 40 kilometers northeast of Quebec City. This uh, beautiful countryside raised up uh, from the banks of the St. Lawrence River and on this edge of the old mountain, extensive networks of alpine roads leading to this, this ski resort where there's some very interesting uh, trail riding and mountain biking to be had. And what an interesting race we've got so far here as uh, Denise, an early leader, shot off then by the pace as Frischnet has now moved through. Frischnet in the Grundig series so far has not had a very happy time as Denise then behind him. Denise has won in Belgium and Great Britain. Uh, here, uh, Gould coming through who's been really off the pace and has now begun to show his pace as he comes with Salem back behind him here. But uh, the absolute revelation at the moment, Thomas Frischnet, we'll pick him up later on. Bart Brentjens likewise coming through here. He had a couple of uh, decent places. He was the third in Belgium, third in uh, Great Britain, Bart Brentjens. And here, the man then who had sort of an unfortunate start to the year then, Thomas Frischnet. Failed to score points in Italy, failed to score points in Great Britain. He had a second place when we opened up in Spain. Uh, he won the last one in America that we covered. And here, Denise trying to chase after him, winner in Belgium and Great Britain. But also he failed to score last week in the heat in the US of A. That heat was so intense, 
Uh, Tim Gould goes through now. Let me tell you a story about Tim Gould. That when he went into the uh, dope control at the end of the race, the doctor noticed that suddenly he'd stopped sweating and he was in all sorts of trouble. And in fact, Tim Gould, they rushed him to hospital because he was suffering from dehydration as a flick. Here we go. Show off yours. Get him, don't you? Way! It's all right for you, sunshine. We've made it anyway. But I'll just tell you about Tim Gould then. He had uh, the kind of final lap with Frischnet in the lead. They rushed him to hospital, Tim Gould, after the race last uh, week. And he had been dehydrated, and they pumped six pints of saline liquid into his body to restore it. He's out of hospital, and now he's lying in this top little group, chasing after uh, Frischnet down the road there. And... Uh, Interesting spectators, waiting to see what's happening here. Amongst the spectators, too, is uh, Sandy Gilchrist, who's been looking after the rally riders, Baker and uh, Clark. In fact, he rode the Vets race a couple of days ago and finished second. If he didn't get caught until the final run into the finish. So, well done to Sandy, who's been a great road rider in his day now, taking a mountain by. There, Gould, he'd be pleased to see him then in second place. Then behind um, is Denise. Then Tinker Juarez, who really... Uh, in these conditions, must be wishing for the sunnier climbs and the races yet to come, because after this one, we're off to Mammoth Lakes, California on the, uh, the 9th of uh, July for the next round yet to come. This little group here have got to get the move on if they're going to catch up with that uh, breakaway Mr. Frischnet. The Volvo climb rider behind there, Tinker Jurez from... Mexican background, I think, actually, with a name like that. His name is actually David, but they all know him as Tinker. Come on, show off. No, he wouldn't do that. I don't blame him. Not flicking the back wheel out like that character we saw further on back down there. It's more sensitive. That was Ned Overend that went through just then. And then, oops, over the top then. And some nice riding here from Thomas Frischner. Oh, that is, oh, all sorts of trouble. Let's see how he goes again. That is the problems of going flat out. And down he went. So we've lost one of the riders now. Is he going to get back up again? Yes, he has. Tim Gould in full flight now. Brent Jens. Very tall ride, this chap. See the length of that seat pin. Denise sitting well back, getting plenty of grip on the back wheel. Picking up the lap riders on this shortened course because of conditions. They're beginning to lap riders now. Jurez going through. Almost out of control. Oh, he's gone too! And that's that must be Don Mara. It is. Well, he's been, well, at least three or four times cyclo cross champion of, uh, of, the, of the US of A, and he looks like he's hurt himself. Oh, that hurts just to look at it. Is he okay? Oh, the Trek rider back on his bike looks. Come on. It always amuses me when certain other sports, you know, the people lie there and wait for somebody to come along with a stretcher and feign hurt, but here he goes. This is the sort of pressure they've rather been under. Racing now for something approaching two hours, you lose control, lose concentration, and bang. He rides a Trek, by the way, that's the American company. They want a big American bike manufacturer, the manufacturer of just about most of their own bikes. So many people this day and age get them made elsewhere and slap their label on them, but Trek is an all-American manufacturer who make composite bikes, they make... Uh, them have, have got old-fashioned steel tubing and uh, aluminium too, but this man has just shown them on his Ritchie bike that there's only one way to go, that's off the front, and he has won this race in no uncertain start. Thomas Frischneck then, and behind Bart Prentjens has worked his way through while picking up that action. He's gone past Tim Gould. Bart Prentjens, who was nowhere to be seen, has come through now, caught Tim in the last lap or so, or the last uh, few hundred yards or so, splashing his way to victory. Thomas Frischneck then, just showing all the skills that makes this Swiss Ritchie ride one of the greatest when it comes to cyclone cross or mountain biking. I bet he's going to please with that one. And my goodness, we'd love to hear what he has to say about that. Great ride. You broke away early. Did you have any fears that you'd fall behind at some point for any reason? Well, it was really slippery out there, and I just figured out it's better to ride my own pace and be in first position in the descents, and that's uh, how it worked. And did you look over your shoulder sometimes? Did yeah, you see? Sure, I, <laughs> I was afraid that they're going to catch me at the end, but uh, I had a pretty good lead and uh, no problem. And what about the mud coming down this hill, those moguls? Yeah, it was too bad. Uh, I would like it, I prefer it dry too, but uh, that's just the way it is now. Bart, that was a beautiful race. You were so relaxed before the race. Did you anticipate coming in second like this? 
Ah, it was very red today and it was a very hard course and I did my own race in the beginning a little slowly and then I feel I'm going to be better and uh, I catch so many people, I don't know how much, but... You got that second win, where did it come from? That's so uh, I'll racing always, I don't know, that's, that's my typical uh, kind of racing. <laughs> You've had a wonderful season so far, How, uh, do you think this is the beginning of uh, even more successes on the uh, Grundig World, World Cup circuit? Yeah, I hope next year it's going to be a little bit better, I did you, this year uh, bad luck, this is sometimes, so uh, I hope next year I'm going to for the, the overall class amount. What about this mud, did it hold you back in some ways, do you think that maybe you could have seized first or was Thomas really ahead of you? Uh, I didn't see Thomas, so <laughs> He was very fast and uh, yeah, he liked him, but, and it was uh, very hard today. <laughs> Hi, Timothy. Gosh, you, uh, again, you were one of those fellows who was so relaxed be before the race, and here you are. You look rested. Did you have a good time in that race? Uh, well, yeah, I was in the middle of the race when Thomas was going away. I was, I was suffering and suffering. It was like trying to hang on to him, and it was so hard that we're, we just like to let Thomas go for a race on, of his own. But uh, where did that burst of speed come from at the end? Because you were quite far back, and all of a sudden we saw you as one of the leaders. Uh, well, towards the end, Jernis and uh, Tinker were tiring, and I managed to ride away from them. And uh, you know, I was, I was going for second place, but unfortunately Bart came by me, and I got third. But it's still think, a podium position. You know, very good one. Uh, and uh, do you think it has something to do with your uh, British background that you beat these Californians? Not really, because like last week I was second in the uh, raging sunshine and heat. You know, it's just I'm uh, going quite well at the moment, and uh, I'm, you know. Yeah, it is going well for you. Yeah. Congratulations! It was a great race. Thank you. Hi, Henrik. That was a wonderful race you rode. Where did you get that burst of speed at the end there? I mean, Brenton caught us, and he was going pretty good. So I just tried to stay with him, but he was just going way too fast. What about this last hill down here with the moguls and all the slippery mud? How'd you fare on that? I mean, they took out that downhill part, so that would have been terrible. We were, if they had that in today, we had to run the whole thing up and probably have to run down again. Did you have any uh, mechanical failures of any kind, uh, getting back into your pedals or anything like that that held you back a bit? Uh, no, no major mistakes. I mean, everybody makes mistakes in, in these conditions, so... That's that's not going to be my excuse. Apart from the rain, did you enjoy the race? No, nobody enjoy the rain. I mean, it's so bad when it starts to rain and everything gets so much harder. Congratulations for a fine race run. Hi, Tinker. How are you doing today after this muddy race? I know you don't like the mud. No, well, I mean, I did good. So um, I was really surprised, you know, how hard it was raining. It was like it's coming down like a you know bucket of water. But um. When it rained the most, it was just cleaning our bikes. So it actually, the track was, the, you know, in the better condition when it was pouring down. When it was, you know, not pouring down, everything was just real slippery, and it was just sliding all over the place, and the mud was just picking up. So, when I talked to you before the race, you said that uh, mud really wasn't your uh, best course, and you've uh, done very well today with a fifth. How'd that happen? Yeah. Well, um, I didn't have a good, you know, this is the first race really this year for me that I did good in the mud. And there was only one other race, which was uh, Great Britain, and. Um, I uh, DNF'd in that race, so um, I I didn't want to do it again. So I was in there in a good position, and it was uh, a tough battle with those guys. You know, I couldn't. You know, they were setting a really fast pace, so you know I was happy just to stay with them. Well, there we are then. He might be happy to stay with him, and he's done very well indeed, finishing in fifth spot. There's confirmation of it. He just, in fact, finished ahead of Gary Ford, who was in sixth, the British rider for the Scott team, just out of the frame. Uh, Barry Clark back in 11th spot. Uh, Nick Craig for Diamondback uh, was in 15th, and Barry Clark's rally teammate, David Baker, finishing 17th spot after being bitten to death by the mosquitoes. Chris Young for Muddy Fox in 43rd. Well...